With the new Halo Fleet Com Operation officially released, so far I've heard quite a bit of positive reviews. Oh man, I finally decided to jump into an actually good update. Wait, what the hell? It only seems fitting that with the new Operation update, we get a plethora of positive reviews, also with a standard 3 for 3 dumb shit that comes along with it. But even with the overall update feeling positive, does 3 for 3 actually land on an Operation to bring fans back to Halo Infinite? Has 3 for 3 finally found a solution to the biggest failure they've had since day one? And has 3 for 3 changed the sandbox for the better? Let's grind to get access to the Ghost of Reach armor, pray for the servers to work, and jump right into this. When 3 for 3 had first announced the several changes coming to Operation Fleetcom, I was obviously very surprised. Even though there was quite a few positive feelings toward the game, I feel like I need to pour some cold water on the fan base and start with my bad. And unfortunately, I'm going to sound like a big loser, but I'm going to have to start with a rant. In this update, there was a lot of changes to the sandbox. Many things needed some buffs and nerfs to keep the game flow feeling good. The Ravager got a big boost because it basically sucked ass since the beginning. The Bandit variants got nerfed because they were completely broken in the basic game modes. And the Disruptor was changed to add damage over time to actually make the weapon have some sort of a use in the main game. A lot of good changes, but there was one that really bothered me to my core. Throughout the history of Halo, there has been one weapon that was synonymous with the game, and that was the AR. And nearly every Halo game had their own rendition of the AR and how effective it was in all ranges. Most often, the AR was usually inaccurate at long ranges, but was a perfect mid-range weapon. But by far, in Halo Infinite, the version of the gun was considered to be the best in the entire franchise. It rewarded higher skilled players that use their weapon in the right way with adjusting their firing speed to the bloom that would fly off the charts. So if I'm trying to put this in non-loser terms, if you hold on the trigger right from the rip, the more inaccurate the gun becomes. But if you shoot the gun in burst, then the weapon becomes way better. So if you learn this method and pull off the ninja arts of becoming a sweaty Halo player, you become a dominant person with the AR in your hands. Now with all that currently in place, not a soul out there was actually ever asking for 3 for 3 to change this weapon in any sort of way. So what does 3 for 3 do? Well, let's change the weapon completely just to do something to piss off Marsman. So when I look at the change, 3 for 3 had stated that they wanted to make the AR more consistent by having the full balloon of the weapon reach a smaller area, making it more accurate for the longer you hold the trigger. I mean, in all honesty, that doesn't sound too bad. But the issue is that with the amount of time it takes for the accuracy to reach its full bloom, it's a total of two bullets out of 36 bullet magazines. So remember that method of firing I mentioned earlier? Well, guess what? That shit is broken. Meaning that all you can really do with the AR is fight in a hand-to-hand -hand combat and the mid-range game is completely lost. So people may wonder, why the hell would 3 for 3 do this? And the reasonings aren't actually horrible. They stated that they wanted to give newer players the ability to get used to the game and be at a closer level to the veteran players. So by making the AR have less of a skill gap, then maybe that might work. But by making this change, they've utterly made the AR useless. So my favorite weapon in Halo Infinite, other than the battle rifle, is now just complete crap. Oh, that's real nice. It's almost like even when 343 is trying to help, they basically dig their own grave and make things worse. And I think what bothers me the most about this update is that due to the production speed of 343, we might not be able to get any sort of fixes until GTA 7 releases. So if you hate the new AR, you better get used to it because we're gonna be here for a while. One of the biggest problems that are pretty consistent with this update and that is also pretty horrific are the servers and the stability in which they're being functional. The servers are honestly complete ass. Several times I would try to play a big team battle or squad battle and before it could even load into a game it says loss of dedicated servers and you don't understand the pain and anger that courses through my veins seeing something so small pop up on my screen like this is 2024 on a three-year-old game their servers should be working dog sometimes it would work but then there are times where several games in a row i'd be sent into the shadow realm unable to play a game like man i just want to play halo let me in let me in and imagine you're playing ranked and you get bounced out of a game early because of these servers. My anger levels would send me straight into Super Saiyan mode. I think I'd just go right to Super Saiyan God. There are even times where I would join into squad battle and because there are players that lost their access to the server, they can't fully complete the game's population. It almost feels like this game was made a decade ago and no one's playing it. So sometimes one team would start with a game of six or seven people while the other team would have as low as six. So right out the gate, you're having a handicapped game with one side having an advantage compared to the other team. And when 
what makes matters worse is that none of these players get replaced. It's almost like the system thinks that there's already someone locked into that spot, and until that person leaves the lobby of the game, then they won't find somebody. It sort of reminds me of the old days where they didn't have the ability to find players to replace those that quit once the game had already started. I mean, I remember there's a coalition of Halo fans that want to return to the classic, but I mean, come on now. We just want to play a game that we like, and when the servers are like this and are just broken, we can't even do that at all. Fans love this game, and a lot of people are actually having a lot of positive things to say about the update when they actually get to play it. And I'll be honest, there have been several opinions on whether this is a 3 for 3 problem or more of a Microsoft problem, and I have no idea where to throw the blame to. But to be honest, we need to get to the bottom of this crap and fix it now. If people turn into your game and they can't even connect to a lobby or are even able to play the damn game, then they just won't play. And lastly, maybe I'm being a little greedy, but did you notice that they didn't give us any new map in this update? For the most part, every operation gave us a new map to play. And yes, these maps usually were fan-made content because 3 for 3 clearly can't pull together three devs to make a map together. But even though that's the case, we didn't get a single map in this operation. And I'm sure 343 will add something that they've collected from the fans in a week or two. But it honestly feels like most of the time 343 is at a state of and just drops things when they feel like it. There isn't a plan at this point, and I feel like everyone can sense that. That's why we haven't gotten a content roadmap or a real look at maps and modes that we are expected to see in the future releases. They did announce future operations in the works, as well as some helmets and armors that are being rumored, but we haven't gotten any idea on maps and development or future modes that we should look forward to other than just Headhunter. Unishek, the community manager, says that 3 will continue to support Halo Infinite going forward, then show us. Give us some hype or some excitement of things to look forward to. Don't just leave it to the wind and wait and see and find out. Before I jump into the good, what do you think about the Halo Infinite Operation Fleet Comp so far? Do you like the changes they made? Are you mad about the AR fix? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked the video so far. And after soaking myself into the garbage, I think it's a good time to clean us off and talk about the good. And probably the best update that most fans are hyped about is the fact that the Exchange is actually getting a real look. For those of you who don't know, the Exchange was a system implemented in recent operations where 3 for 3 would provide players with Spartan points or SP, which could be obtained in completing challenges and not having to whip out your ultimate credit score killing credit card and actually just earn things by playing the game rather than just having to pay for it. And up to this point, I have raged on the use of the exchange mainly because it only gave us the option to buy items that were previously unlocked through special events instead of new content. I stated that there was so much potential into this mode and that if they actually invested in it, then people would love it to the highest extent. And for returning players, you barely could unlock anything. So for losers like me who have been playing the game since day one and have continued to play that every single week, I have mainly unlocked most of the exchange content available because I'm just there. And my criticism was that the system was not being used to its fullest potential because you could easily put in new content for us to earn and solve a lot of the problems the fans had with the game. And what's this? They added the new Ghost of Reach armor available to pay with Spartan points? Yes, yes, we can finally just play the game and earn it. And of course, yes, I will add that you could also pay it with cash. You want to just circumvent all the points. Okay, well, either way, as much as my hype levels were reaching plus ultra, because up until this point, 3 for 3 has refused to even think about this concept, so maybe, just just maybe, they might actually turn course and add more content like this. So now, even if this is a great idea, I do need to be real with you. The amount of Spartan points required to earn this Ghost of Reach armor is way too much. 75k in Spartan points is required to actually earn this piece of armor, which is crazy high when you actually calculate the time it would take to earn by just playing. It would mean that you would have to complete all four operations equaling in 60k Spartan points and need to complete each weekly challenge reward in the time that you played in those operations to actually get the points required to purchase this armor. That's a lot of Halo. And I've been playing Halo Infinite quite a bit. I always completed the challenges, I played every operation, and me being stupid, I thought that hey, maybe I can purchase emblems or colors in the exchange because I can just earn them, not knowing that they were going to drop some fat level armor that was worth 75k into the shop. So when they finally released this update, I realized that I had to play at least 50 to 100 games to actually unlock this armor. Now for a person who loves Halo, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna play all those different games. But in reality, that's a crazy amount. And I'm gonna be real with you. There were complete morons that came onto Twitter and said, well, because Street Fighter 3 added the Ghost of Rich armor in the exchange, we should not criticize the amount of SP it takes to earn it. I wanna 
call bullshit on that. Just because they did something that fans have been asking for them to do for the last three years, the fact that they do it now doesn't mean we should just be happy and accept it if there is a clear problem. I will be honest with you. It's a great thing to finally see them actually do this and implement it. It means that they do hear us fans of our anger and sorrow and criticism and are actually trying to change it. But that doesn't mean that we need to be stupid and just accept anything that they provide for us because it's somewhat positive. We can criticize them for the price tag and hope that they make these adjustments. You want players to be able to purchase armors and feel like their grind was worth it. So when you make something 75000 in price, that means that you are expecting fans to purchase that helmet and be unable to purchase any other thing in the exchange. Because if you do buy this armor, it's going to take a very long grind to earn anything else in the shop. This has so much potential to be amazing, but 343 needs to think about how they want to handle the exchange going forward. The people that are currently playing your game are your fans, so why put them in this state of crap if you want to keep them around? I like what you did with giving people the choice of either earning the armor or buying it if they just want to skip ahead, but I feel like you just need to be smarter in how you do it. The most important aspect of Halo Infinite is Forge, and it's also getting quite a bit of updates as well. With the addition of Jeff Steitzer's voice lines and the inclusion of the music will give Forgers quite a bit of things that they can add to their maps and modes. Like being able to add music from the campaign alone has so much potential when you think about it. People who make campaign missions in Forge could now add music to elevate the situation. If you make infection game modes, maybe you can add some spooky soundtracks to scare some players and make the vibe fit the entire experience. I mean, Halo Infinite's music is phenomenal, and I wouldn't mind adding music in the basic game mode. Imagine the last 25 kills of the big team battle match, we turn on the main theme of Halo to get people hyped to see who will end the match. I mean, that would be pretty epic. And I think right off the bat, firefight modes are going to get some really cool moments with the addition of this type of music. Forge Falcons had already made the announcement that with their new COD Zombies game mode that they made they're going to be adding music tracks into different levels so you feel more of a interesting or more in-depth experience and this exactly fits with what 343 wanted people to do i think it's going to be a great time when they finally get to see all these different projects get these updates and lastly vip is actually really fun to play vip the shadow mode that technically had been completed for nearly a year is finally released and is a pretty damn good time the goal is to eliminate the enemy team's vip 10 times while protecting your own vip in the process and yes we have seen this mode several times in various FPS games, but this is a fun mode to add to the Halo sandbox. We are also adding in Headhunter, which is a mode that many fans have sought after for a while. I think these modes are basic yet fun additions to Halo, but what makes this addition even better is that you can add these functions into Forge, and now you can create even more variants of these experiences to be created and for future use. I don't think I need to go off in a long rant about this mode, but what I'd like to see is that fans have wanted this mode for a while, and I'm just glad that we actually get the see it. Now one of the big questions that most fans ask whenever a new operation is released is do you think that this operation is enough to get fans back? Honestly, no. I think this operation does some great things in actually giving fans the ability to earn armor instead of directly putting it directly in the shop. Some fun game modes for fans to enjoy and some new additions in Forge that could really change the way we play in a great way. But at the same time, the problem of the servers being so broken does put a damper on the fun things added to the game and some of the balancing shifts they did to the sandbox make me want to puke. But I think the bottom line of the overall update should be that we need to see major additions that would give fans a feeling of something big coming in order for them to come back into the game. Like the addition of a double barrel shotgun or the Falcon would change the sandbox and fans may want to jump in and try it out. The creation of modes like Warzone Assault in Halo Infinite will bring people back to play. Hell, even the Forge Falcons Battle Royale will get people to say, hey, maybe we should go and check that out. Maybe we should go see what 3 for 3 has been cooking. But just having some additions made to the shop and new game mode that really has been developed a year ago is not really going to change that momentum. And I'm not being just some normal negative Halo fan because I mean, honestly, there's quite a bit of that already out there. I'm not saying that this game is horrible or I don't have fun playing it because I really do enjoy the game. I have fun playing Infinite every day, but at the same time, I'm not going to put my logic aside and say this new shop update changes everything because it doesn't. 3 for 3, I know you are working on the next Halo projects and the lessening of content in the future is expected, but my hope is at this 
point, whatever you have in your stockpile should just be released and given to the public. Several Halo leakers have discussed that new weapons and vehicles and other modes have been basically completed for months now. So why not release them and just give us what you have instead of holding on to them? You're not going to be earning anything by ho holding on to these assets. You're just going to get a bunch of pissed off Halo fans wondering what could have been if you actually dropped this content. And unfortunately, the longer you wait, the more players are going to be leaving. If you want to see why hopes for the future of Halo's multiplayer in its next installments, check out the video in the end screen. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Game on. <laughs>